Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video we are going to continue with this series and actually test out a few things. First of all what I want to do is, I for example say that I want this pineapple to give me like 5 pineapples instead of 1. So what I am going to do is just select this and set this to 5. So now this is going to give me 5 pineapples. But this is an instance of this pineapple actor that is, that is going to give me 5 apples. If I drag another pineapple over here, let's say, and this is still going to give me one pineapple. If you want this to be default, you have to open this up and change this over here to 5, so that it's going to be 5 all across the board, okay? So this is per instance editing and this is base class editing. Just remember this difference. So let's test this out and if I overlap this, so now I should have like 6 pineapples, 1 orange and 1 apple, okay? Basically, this is the way that you can use your gameplay effect level to modify your amount that you're going to give the character for the apples and the inventory, like that, okay. Now we're going to move towards the crafting section of this inventory. So for that, what I'm going to do is create a new folder and call this GA classes. Okay. First, I'm going to create my base class. It's going to be a type game playability. It's going to be this one. So I'm going to call this GA make uh, apple pie. Okay, open this up. Over here, what I'm going to do is first of all say commit ability. This one. And then say apply gameplay effect to owners. And then what you want to do is say end ability. Okay. So first we are going to apply a gameplay effect to owner. Now this effect is going to actually increment our Apple Pie count. Okay. So let's create a class for this. Going back to our J A N G E folder. And create a new blueprint class and it's going to be of type gameplay effect. This one call it GE underscore and make apple pie. Open this up, close and open this again. So it's open up like this. Add a modifier for this, and this is going to be giving me apple pie. And let's say for one crafting, I'm going to get like three apple pies okay compile and save this and i'm going to use this inside of my make apple class now for apple pie i want to detect like five apples and one orange this is not accurate but uh, just for the example consider this that an orange is required for apple pie so the way that you do this is actually in the class defaults you have this cost gameplay effect we don't have the cost gameplay effect that's going to determine whether we can make apple pie or not. Okay. Going back to our G classes and we say create a new blueprint class and it's going to type gameplay effect. And I'm going to call this GE underscore apple pie cost. Okay, close this and open it again. Now for this I'm going to require um, five apples, so it's going to be like negative five, and I also want one orange. So, and add in modifier, and this is going to be orange. This is going to add negative one. Okay, compile and save this. And we use this apple pie cost inside of my GA make apple as a cost class. Okay, compile and save this, and now. Inside of our player character, I'm going to edit this. So, what I'm going to do is on begin play, I want to require this recipe, and then uh, uh, when I press a button, I'm going to activate this crafting. Okay, so on event begin play, I'm going to call that initialize ability function. This one and choose my GA make apple pie. Okay, 
and I'm going to define a new input for this an action mapping say make apple pie and I'm change this to one key going back to our third person vector over here let's say let's say search for that make apple pie this input and I'm going to say try activatability by class and I'm going to use that make apple pie and over here what I could do is say branch and this is just purely for cosmetic purposes you could extend this according to your own user interface requirements and I'm going to say need apple pie and for the false what I'm going to do is say not no not enough resources okay compile and save this and let's create a few more of these okay let's delete these and one do is create a row of these so I can do it like this and duplicate these Let's add a few more so it's easier. Okay. Now let's test it out. If I acquire these, some of this, I have two apples, two oranges, and two pineapples. So if I press the one key, it's going to say not enough resources. But if I acquire more apples, I'm going over here and press the one key, it's going to take a bit of time. Then the ability is activated once in the project. So now it says made apple pie. And if I check my inventory, I have three apple pie against my five apples and one orange. Okay, so this is the way that you can use your gameplay abilities for crafting. And now let's extend this to our food cocktail as well. Going back to our GA classes and duplicate this and say make food cocktail. Okay. And I want to add a G class for that. So going back, I'm going to go G classes, duplicate this, and say make food cocktail. Open this up and change this to food cocktail. A food cocktail is sort of expensive for my game. So I'm going to get this only one for a lot of ingredients, okay? And I'm going to use this inside of my make food cocktail GA class. And I'm going to define this cost as well for this. Let's close this up and duplicate this. Let's say this uh, food cocktail cost. And now this is going to take uh, five apples, three oranges, and I can add another modifier for pineapples. And this is going to be like taking four pineapples for my fruit cocktail. Okay, so if I have these only, then I can activate my ability or rather do the crafting in my case. Okay, so use this cost class inside of my GA class. Okay, this is done, and now what you want to do is acquire that ability as well. So, on my begin play. What you could do is duplicate this function, or you could use that initializability multi function. This one just takes an array of arguments. Okay, but I'm going to stick with this and use my make full cocktail, compile and save this. Now, there's an, another interesting thing to note over here is that, like in the game and Dead Rising 4, you had to acquire those blueprints for the weapons before you could actually craft those. So this is the way that you can restrict your players so they have to find a blueprint and that blueprint calls this function then they acquire the ability and then they can only craft this uh, recipe okay if they don't have the recipe they cannot craft it like in dead rising 4 you have to find a blueprint okay so this is a way to go for that kind of stuff i'm going to add another input for this and call this make food cocktail 
and um, and then choose the two key numeric tool. Uh, over here, I'm gonna say a full cocktail, and this is gonna do the same. Okay. And over here, I'm going to use my made full cocktail class and say over here, made, made full cocktail. Okay, compile and save this. So, for this, we require five apples, three oranges, and four pineapples. Okay, let's test this out. So, I acquire five apples. One, two, three, four, five, three oranges and four pineapples. Okay, so if I activate my ability, it says made fruit cocktail. I have one fruit cocktail, and my inventory for apple, orange, and pineapple is zero. So, yeah, this is it for this video. This is the way that you use your gameplay abilities for crafting and inventory management. And I'm going to add just one more video, for example, if you want to drop this inventory, your apples, your pineapples, and oranges, yeah, you got to drop this. So we're going to add, I'm going to add just one more video for demonstrating how you can use your user interface to drop these kind of things. So yeah, this is it for this video. Thank you very much.